Today, we're going to cover best practices for using color in Power BI. Now, color is a fundamental part of dashboard design, but you want to be discriminant in how you use color and use it intentionally to really highlight key data and tell a story. You know, you want to avoid using colors that are difficult to read, too many colors, and many other tips that we're going to cover today. Numero actually has seven working with color tips that we'll be reviewing today, starting with the fundamentals of building a color palette, using a single color for continuous data, using color to make important information stand out, choosing colors that are easily distinguishable, color accessibility, not using too many colors, and then we'll wrap up with a discussion on working with icons as those can contain colors and some choices that are pertinent to dashboard design as well. First, we're going to take a look at the fundamentals of building out a color palette. So we actually have a screenshot of one of Numero's sales dashboard templates here to help showcase our color palette and how it works within this particular dashboard. Now, when we talk about a color palette and dashboard colors, we like to have two differentiating categories. We like to have our dashboard base colors as well as our data content colors. And when you start designing the dashboard, those dashboard base colors are gonna be the first element that comes into the design and the colors that we choose for the dashboard. Now here in this particular color palette, we've chosen a light gray scale color for that background color. So this is what we see in between each of our individual reports. Before you layer reports on top of the canvas, this is going to be the background color. And for our actual box color, the reports themselves have a background color. That is just a straight white that we're using. And we like this white against the light gray contrast. It really helps our reports pop against the background so we can see each of our KPIs very clearly. Each of these four reports that we have on the dashboard are very well differentiated from one another. And it just makes it more readable to kind of have that report box color really pop out against that background color that we're choosing. We don't want a super vibrant, overwhelming background color. You know, if you could imagine if this was a bright blue or a bright green or something, it might be a little overwhelming to the eye. The sort of subtle contrast that we have between the background color and the box color is working really nicely on this dashboard. Now, we also recommend if you have any slicers or filters within the report boxes themselves to use that background color because it's just going to tie in everything together really nicely and allow those slicers to pop against that white background color as well. And then for our text color, we're just using a, a, a black gradient here. We do recommend using black scale colors for text. They're just going to be the most readable, not overwhelm the, the user's eye as they look at the page and try to determine what's going on. And again, black with these particular white and light gray colors is really going to pop and look good. Now, when we talk about the actual data content colors, we like to choose a primary color first. Here we're using a blue, and this primary color is what's going to be used in our visualizations that only show a single value. So you can see that in this line chart, you can see it in the category breakdown of this data table, and you can see it in the sales targets report that's only showing one single color. For this color, we've chosen the same blue that's used in our Numero icon, as we like to choose a color that stays on brand, and we can see this blue consistently throughout the dashboard. It looks really nice, and it highlights Numero's brand and stays on point there. Now, when we add in additional colors to visualizations, if you're comparing multiple values, we do want those to be distinct from our primary color. As we can see in this particular report, we are using this purple as our second primary color and this red hue as our third primary color. But this makes it really easy to tell in this stacked bar chart how much of a percentage of the 100 furniture is making up, office supplies are making up, and technology. In this particular line, very clear to tell that office supplies are winning out. 
Now, you don't have to limit your primary colors to only three. If you have a report that's comparing four or five values, that's okay too. We will discuss more, you know, how many colors is too many colors and what to focus on with these primary colors and how to differentiate as we continue on with the tutorial. Now, here we are in Power BI to help showcase our second tip, which is to use a single color for continuous data. So here we have a new Mero sales performance report template. Uh, it's showing a single value, and that is our sales over time in millions of dollars. So you can see we're using the same consistent blue color that was our primary color in the last uh, color palette that we defined. And this is because we're looking at the same value here. Now we could come into these individual columns and change the color of January to maybe a different hue of blue. But this doesn't necessarily do anything and might confuse the end user. Why is January this lighter blue when it's still just showing the sales in millions of dollars the same as February, March, April, and so on throughout the rest of the year? So when looking at a single data point, we do recommend using a single color for that continuous data. Our next tip is to use color to make important information stand out. So in the screenshot here, we can see we have a report showing sales performance by subcategory. And in the version on the left, we have a lot of subcategories and a lot of different colors going on to define each subcategory. There's nothing necessarily wrong with this, but it is overwhelming to the eye. A lot of colors, it's hard to tell exactly what's going on or what category is performing more effectively than others. One thing we do recommend doing is highlighting a specific subcategory with a color and having the rest of the subcategories have a more neutral grayscale color so that the color used to, to highlight that one specific subcategory to tell the story of that subcategory over time is really popping out against the others with the grayscale colors that are being used behind it. Our next tip is that when we're showing comparison or part to whole insights, we want to pick colors that are easily distinguishable. So here we have three different colors. This is from our original color palette that we talked about at the beginning of the tutorial, but these are each individually showcasing consumer versus corporate versus home office and how they have their ratio to sales. These colors are very different and it makes it very easy for the end user to quickly tell the difference between each three of these categories. However, you know, we could change this to be similar colors that are all on the blue scale. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. There's nothing necessarily wrong with using gradient colors in this way. It just doesn't pop as quickly. It doesn't tell the story of each category as well as those three very distinct colors did. Now, there is one use case where we might want to use colors on the same color gradient, so staying on this blue gradient for these three different categories. And if that's if you have any audience members with a color vision deficiency, um, they're able to detect contrast, and so using a contrasting gradient and single color in your Power BI visuals can actually improve accessibility in that use case. We also don't want to use too many colors. So in this report, we can see performance by subcategory. We have a lot of subcategories in this report. Right now, they all have distinct colors. Using too many colors can actually detract from what the report is telling you, and we, we just don't want people to get overwhelmed and distracted. So we recommend reducing the number of colors where possible, and ideally actually using fewer than six colors per visual. I'm gonna go ahead and just use a consistent color with all of these subcategories and just kind of showcase we have the data labels at the bottom so we're easily able to tell how each subcategory is performing and it looks a little more clean and less distracting than when we had an individual color for each subcategory. 
Our final tip is on working with icons. And now icons can be really helpful and important in our KPIs at the top of our dashboard. They tell a story simplistically and give the end user an idea of what type of number we're looking at. We recommend not scaling up the size of your icons themselves. Here on the left, we can see, you know, this icon itself is so large, it's actually even bigger than the number that we want to focus on. And especially since these are KPIs, we want that number to be the primary focus. But what we can do is actually increase the size of a color box behind the icon to one, this just looks really visually appealing, but two, we're keeping the icon small. We're not increasing the size where that icon might get pixelated and we're allowing it to stay more balanced with the size of the actual KPI that's being showcased next to the icon. And we have this open in Power BI as well. We can see one with kind of the larger icon and one with that smaller icon and the colored pattern square behind it. You can play around with this on Power BI and see what works best for your KPIs. But we do recommend, you know, not scaling up the icons themselves and instead using that lighter color background to fill in the space. Now that's it for today's best practices for using color in Power BI tutorial, but do keep in mind that all of the tips we covered today are available in the Numero blog. And if you're even more interested in our color palettes, we have themed color palette templates available for all of our dashboards. Even our paginated reports and mobile reports have these color themes that you can apply as well. And we just have a lot of great resources on design as a whole. So check out our blog, check out our handbooks, and thanks for joining today's tutorial.